Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for, with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you today. got to tell you, it's another beautiful day here in New Jersey. Actually, uh, we just got word that once again we're waiting for another nor'easter, and uh, we're about to get buried with another uh, 8 to 12 inches of the white stuff. So, uh, yay us. Uh, I hope as you're listening to this, you're somewhere warm and cozy, or at the very least, you're comforted by the fact that you've got a spectacular snow thrower. So, today is a fantastic day, and I've got an amazing expert who is most certainly the real deal. Now, for the folks who I work with in any of my coaching programs, my mastermind groups are through Powerful Words Character Development, All-Star Cheer Sites, or Dance Sites Done Right, you know how much I focus on staying positive so that we can remain focused on successful results, right? Well, this episode is going to help us do just that. So today, it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. He's got a ton of valuable information to help you succeed. So strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be awesome. As I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. We only go around once, right? Let's make sure that that one time is a blast. All right, boys and girls, it's now that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, put down Twitter, put away your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your child, or anything else that might distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So before we officially get going, I want to give you a little bit of background about our guest today. Dr. Joey Fawcett is the internationally known author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Work Positive in a Negative World. Redefine Your Reality, and Achieve Your Business Dreams through Entrepreneur Press. He's a professional speaker who coaches business professionals to increase sales with greater productivity so they leave the office earlier to do what they love with their family and friends, leading individuals and organizations of every size to achieve amazing results. He's the founder of Listen to Life, a business coaching company that helps owners, leaders, sales professionals, managers, and others to achieve their business dreams primarily through his coaching programs, Seven Weeks to Work Positive, and the Work Positive Master Coaching Program. He's also the founder of the Positive Media Network, a fully customizable online streaming music marketing tool. His blog is read in over 50 countries. Dr. Joey has appeared as a guest on hundreds of radio and TV shows across North America in most major markets. He's written over 500 articles that have appeared in the Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, MSNBC, CNBC, Dallas Morning News, Sacramento Bee, Entrepreneur.com, Yahoo Finance, Singapore, and countless other websites. He and his wife have two adult daughters. They enjoy living on Pleasant Gap Farm with their three yellow labs, three quarter horses, and one cat, Boo Radley. Dr. Joey, welcome to The Real Deal. I'm thrilled to have you. Oh, man, anytime I get to be with The Real Deal, Jason Silverman, it's a good day for me. <laughs> well, it's a good day well, all way, around. We're waiting. Yeah, it is. By the way, we're waiting on snow here in the south. Um, but the sun's shining right now, so I'm one of those uh, doubting Thomases when it comes to snowstorms. <laughs> well, hopefully hopefully it passes you guys right by. and, uh, and We'll send it to Jersey. <laughs> yeah, thank you, because what we need here is, is a little bit more snow. More snow, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, um, at least you're equipped to deal with it, right? <laughs> uh, supposedly. Supposedly. So let me tell you, so before, do this. Before we get started, and you know, yeah. for those who haven't had the opportunity and pleasure of meeting you or hearing you speak or reading your book, do me a favor. Sure. Would you share your story? You know, What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Dr. Joey? Uh, Dr. Joey, let's see. Let me tell you a story from when I was nine years old that kind of uh, sets up who I am, Jason. Great. Uh, when, when I was a kid, about nine years old, I wanted to do what every nine-year-old wants to do, and a nine-year-old little boy, and that was I wanted to earn money by mowing lawns. And so uh, I was a budding entrepreneur, come from a long line of entrepreneurs, and so I 
borrowed my dad's lawnmower and went out and started mowing lawns. And that lasted, I think, a grand total of three weeks, Jason. <laughs> and I discovered that I have the, just the worst allergies in the world. Now, this was 100 years ago before everybody had allergies, you know, so I was a little on the cutting edge even with allergies. Wound up in uh, Duke Hospital for a week as a nine-year-old, and they looked at my mom and said, we don't think he's going to make it through the night. And I remember her look at, yeah, it was a severe viral infection in my lungs, and, and it was just, uh, it was an opportunity for me to learn later when I would read Dr. Norman Vincent Peale's statement that within adversity are the seeds of opportunity. I, I seized that moment right there. I just had never heard of Dr. Peale at that point in time. But my mom looked in my eyes, Jason, and said, son, I am positive you are going to make it through the night. And so I did and got healthy enough to come home. And since I couldn't mow lawns, I still was determined to make some money. Because back then, Jason, three-speed bikes had just come out. And I know they probably got like 100 speed bikes now. But I was determined to have this three-speed bike. And so even though it was in the summer, obviously, um, I went door-to-door selling a product, which back then was really new, inscribed Christmas cards. This was the, the first wave of uh, mass customization and printing, and you could have your family's name inscribed in a Christmas card. And so I went door to door, 100 degrees, 100% humidity in eastern North Carolina, with my <laughs> cute little catalog uh, showing people my Christmas cards, and uh, sold enough of them to where I learned referral marketing, so my friend Dr. Ivan Meisner would be really proud of me. Uh, I learned referral marketing at an early age and just started selling. Not only sold enough to get a three-speed bike, but I got a really cool telescope. And back then, Jason, cassette decks were just coming out. Those are hot. Got oh, they were really hot. No longer 8-track, buddy. And uh, <laughs> so I was able to record my own stuff. Uh, so there, there you have it. Uh, that, that's who I, how I began my auspicious beginnings at nine years old. It, but truly, that's how I learned to work positive. Because if I allowed the negative world, the conditions around me, the environment in which I find myself to determine my results, uh, it would be that. That's just a zero sum game. But I find the things I can control. And I manage those and work positive to achieve some amazing results. And that's what I have a wonderful opportunity to speak and coach about all around the country. I love it. T- tell me this, if you would. How did you mm-hmm. discover the five core practices of a work-positive lifestyle? Because I think that this really jumps into where people need to be. Oh, absolutely. I, well, I, my, my wife, I've been married, I've been blessed to be married to the same woman for 31 years. Now I have friends that have been married 31 years, just not to the same woman, right? Uh, but this one is the most patient woman in the world. So, Wendy, you, you may have heard something about the economy went into a great recession not so long ago. And, and of course, we're no longer in it, by the way, although you'd have a hard time proving that by a lot of people. Uh, my wife looks at me one day because she's used to me traveling so much. And she says, uh, isn't it time for you to travel? Uh, Baby, I'm not feeling love. What's the problem here? (laughs) She says, well, usually when you leave, uh, we live on a little farm. Usually when you leave the farm, you're riding a cash cow. And I I haven't seen you riding the cash cow lately. Uh, uh, So that gave me cause for pause. And I I just began thinking about it. I I grew up listening to my grandfather talk about uh, the Great Depression and what that was like. And I said, okay, all these uh, so-called experts are referring to this as the Great Recession. That was the Great Depression. Surely somebody did something during the Great Depression, which was remarkable. And so I found uh, lots of remarkable people, and I don't have time to tell you about all of them today, Jason. But, for instance, Dale Carnegie. I I try to read uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People at least once a year. Uh, He wrote that book in 36, published in 37, became the number two bestseller, right in the teeth of the Great Depression, and that's now about a $30 million training company around the world. Uh, Harlan Sanders up in the great metropolitan area of Corbin, Kentucky, uh, filed for bankruptcy at 66, left with a station wagon, chicken, a few chicken legs and 11 secret herbs and spices and launched out and taught everybody how to fry his chicken. And it's a bazillion dollar company. Now. Just story after story like that. Uh, Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard started their little company. Uh, you know, it's only doing about nine, 
billion a year now, I think, um, back in the Great Depression. Just write a story like that. So I said, what do these guys do? What do these people do who started? I mean, come on, Jason. It's the worst economic disaster ever in the history of our country, even to this day. How did they do it? So I began studying their lives like crazy and just what were their daily habits, what were their core practices, uh, other people like Andrew Carnegie and others. And I, I found five core practices that they all lived into and out of. And uh, so I said, well, let me try them out first. So I put them into practice in my own business. Started writing articles about it. Entrepreneur Magazine uh, came to me, and they said, hey, let's publish a book together. So we did, and I live in <laughs> I live in Dry Fork. Where the heck is that, Virginia? <laughs> you know, nobody knows where that is. Um, and, and this book reached number one on Amazon three different times in three different categories. And, and I said, well, I think maybe these five core practices will work. So I've dedicated the, the rest of my days to teaching these five core practices to, to as many people as want to achieve amazing results in their own lives, as well as their businesses. Absolutely. Well, they're, they're obviously connected. So what are the three major benefits um, that you found of a work-positive lifestyle for, uh, for business owners? Business owners, uh, without fail, increase their sales with greater productivity from their team, and they get out of the office earlier so they can go do what they love with those they love. And I heard you in the introduction talking about having fun. Man, that's what we're all really working for, right, is, is to buy ourselves some time, you to be with those two amazing children and their mom, uh, you know, and the rest of us just to have fun with people that we enjoy being with, doing what we love with those we love. We're trying to buy ourselves time and some financial independence there. And the pathway to doing that is increasing sales with greater productivity from our teams. And I know you, you talk a lot about systems also. So we're, we're putting in place those systems that our teams can use that increase sales so that we can go do what we love with those we love. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, we're, we're spot on the same page here. What, mm. what do you feel like the most common challenge um, that people experience in, in trying to gain that work positive lifestyle is? They give up their choice. Mm. They allow. The, they, they really do. We do. We do. I should say we because I, I do that too. Um, we think that we are at the mercy of the negative world. And we expose, even inundate, and soak ourselves in the negativity that pervades all of this world. Um, and we do senseless things like watching the morning news every morning on our way to work. And, and so by the time, let's say you own your own insurance agency, by the time you get to your insurance office, you don't want to buy any insurance, do you? The economy sucks. Nobody's buying insurance. I mean, that's your mental mindset by the time you get there. So we, we give up our choice. Hmm. That's what a, what a, what a clean answer. And and I've I've heard that from so many people. Uh, well, you know, I don't. I'm not going to send this out. People aren't buying. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, you know what? You, How do you know? Not only are you you taking away your choice, you're taking away their choice. Oh yeah, now that's that's that fifth core practice, that ethical implication. Um, yeah, you're exactly right. Serving others is huge, and and. Uh, yeah, that's that's well said. I like that, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. So, Dr. Joy, let's dive in. What, what's the first of the core practices? First core practice is I perceive the positive at work, and that's that mental dynamic. And in a word, what you choose to do here is to focus on the positive and filter out the negative. That's focus on the positive and filter out the negative. So you're playing to your strengths. You're finding those parts of your business that are working well, and you're accelerating those. Now it's not that there, it's not that we deny negativity. It's not that we, you know, suddenly have some philosophical system that says negativity does not exist, evil is not in the world. Nope, no rose-colored glasses here. There's a lot of stuff that sucks in the world, okay, and sometimes it's the economy. But I filter that. That is, I, I choose not to participate. I'm a conscientious objector to the purveyors <laughs> of negativity in the world, okay? And I focus on the positive. What are the things I can do? And so one of the things I can do is I can start my morning differently, put down the TV remote control, pick up some positive literature. And I usually recommend, and this is just a free tip here, I usually recommend take 10 in the morning, 
five minutes to read positive literature, listen to positive music, and five minutes to visualize positive outcomes to your appointments for the day. That will revolutionize your business. And look, this is nothing new. We go back to Napoleon Hill and thinking very rich and when he's talking about uh, feeding your subconscious messages. Uh, it's, it's right out of that. So again, it's a choice. It's a choice that we make. So the first core practice is the mental dynamic of focus on the positive and filter out the negative, and I call that the perceived core practice. I love it. All right. Let's move on. What's the second core practice? Well, let's say Jason and I are both guys who are really working on perceiving the positive at work. We're focusing on the positive, filtering out the negative. We're feeding our mind good mental breakfast, you know, highly metabolic nourishing things that are positive for our brain in the morning. But then Jason and I go to the office, and we discover not everybody there is doing what we're doing. Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> some of our customers walking through the door, their attitude sucks. Uh, some of the people we're trying to sell something to, they, you know, they're just having a miserable day. As I tried it, one of my coaching techniques, Jason, is I encourage people to observe without participating. Hmm. So you observe the negativity without participating in it. So you put a boundary right there. And, and one of my favorite lines is, I think you're a dog owner just like I am. Um, yes, sir. We're, we're up to five dogs. Three of them are yellow labs now. So, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Our daughters are grown. Remember, we've got to have something. <laughs> so, so one of my favorite boundary statements is, you know, when somebody's griping about a customer that came in that day or a client's uh, rant and raving about the product or something like that. I said, look, you don't know what happened to that person. The dog could have peed on her favorite pair of shoes that she was going to wear with that outfit this morning. And so her day got off to a really bad start. You just don't know what happened. So you, you observe that without participating. So in order to work positive, though, you've got to learn to put those boundaries in place. You've got to learn to deal with negative people without becoming one yourself or to learn to deal with those persons that I call Eeyore vampires. <laughs> now, Eeyore, you remember, okay, Winnie the Pooh uh, and, and the rest of the crowd, Piglet, T I W G O R. It's kind of like a team meeting at work. You know, they're playing Christopher Robin's Perfect Play Day, right? And, and, and who walks up but Eeyore? And, and, geez, we've all been on teams like that. It's probably why you and I work for ourselves. Uh, we've <laughs> all, all been on teams like that, right? Uh, you can try that if you want to, but it'll never work. I remember back in 79 we tried that, right? Well, it'd be really cool if you could just leave Eeyore at work, right? Drive away and just walk away from Eeyore. Man, but that doesn't happen. And Eeyore can be a customer or client, too. Eeyore, when the sun goes down, morphs into a vampire. So you're there at home with, with your spouse and kids or with the dog, and you're trying to be with people that you choose to be with and the ones that you love. And who's in the back of your head sucking? Sucking brain power, time, energy, and attention. It's that Eeyore. That's where Eeyore's become a vampire. So one of the key things we work with business people around is how to deal with Eeyore vampires, whether customers or clients or team members that they've willingly hired into their business, how to deal with those and to do so in a way that uh, really keeps the business moving forward. Because, Jason, it costs too much to do business with some people. And that's just a reality. And that's, that's it, the heart and soul of that second core practice. I conceive the positive at work, the social dynamic. Love it. Conceive it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. First I perceive, then I conceive it. What's the third? I believe the positive at work. One of the things that happens is the negative world, when we immerse ourselves in it so much, really cuts down our ability to innovate, to come up with the disruptions um, that, that can totally provide solutions to our customers that nobody else is doing. So our imagination gets short-circuited. Um, the imagination, and, and again, the classic literature talks about this. I'm reading Dale Carnegie again right now, How to Win Friends. The, the oak tree and the acorn... You know, uh, it, it's that whole thing. We can't see that anymore. Our range of options becomes very limited. And what begins to happen is the negative world impinges on our emotional selves, which is what the Believe Core practice is all about. Our range of options becomes narrow. We no longer believe that we can make a difference or that we can succeed in business. And what that does, Jason, is it causes us to emotionally disengage from our work. 
So the meaning, the purpose, the satisfaction that we would normally get out of our work is gone. It's just absent. In fact, if you look at surveys, and my friend Mark Crowley, who wrote a great book, Lead from the Heart, um, cites these statistics in a wonderful way. Anywhere from, depending on which survey you read, anywhere from about 50% to up to 74% of American workers say that they're dissatisfied with their work. That's mm. abysmal. That's absolutely awful. You got 50 to 74 percent of people walking around miserable because of their work. Oh my God, is that any way to live? I, we're only here a short time. We got to make the most of it. So we help people through the Believe Core practice really uh, willingly suspend their disbelief so that they can discover the unique contribution that they're here to make and begin to believe again that they can engage with meaningful work, and then that allows a creative imagination to really soar and find solutions to problems that people are willing to pay a lot of money for. Wow. Wow. All right. So, so far we've got, I perceive the positive mentally. I conceive it socially. I believe it emotionally. Dr. Joy, what's the fourth core practice? The fourth core practice, interestingly, is fourth for a reason, because you've got to walk through these first three, Jason, to get to the fourth. Now, most people want to go right to the fourth. They want to see the results. It's kind of like when my wife was having babies. You know, she wanted to tell everybody, oh, I was in labor for 21 hours. Nobody wanted to hear that. <laughs> they just wanted to hold the baby, right? Exactly. It's, that's the way most of us are. We just want to see the results. We don't want to do the hard work and take the time to perceive it, conceive it, and believe it. Once you do, then you see the physical manifestation of those efforts in that you achieve the positive at work. This is where your bottom line improves. This is where employees are happier. This is where you're happier as a business owner. This is where the whole thing begins to take flight, and there's a certain synergy that happens there that is just basically unexplainable except for these changes you've made in your lifestyle. Now, in the Work Positive and Negative World book, also in our seven weeks to work positive in our work positive master coaching programs, we literally help you live into what I call the achievement prescription. And I'll just give this to you quickly there. It's, it's in the book in that fourth core practice. But it, it's attention plus intention plus action. What is attention? That's the perceive and conceive core practice. I choose to pay attention to positive thoughts and positive people. So it's attention plus intention. That's the believe core practice, Jason, because I seek to release my imagination, okay? And I crowd out the negative world, and I allow myself to become emotionally engaged with my work again. But intention isolated from attention and action is the road to nowhere. I can sit here and intend to do lots of things, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but until I act, and that's the real magic of the achieve core practice, we act. These great depression gurus acted in ways that were counterintuitive to what other people were doing around them. They chose to put the boundaries, the border guards around their minds and their hearts and their relationships, and then act in ways that were counterintuitive to what everyone else was doing. As Jim Rohn talks about, and he, oh, he was my hero, uh, Jim Rohn talks about, you know, a seed, you put it in the ground and it immediately begins to defy gravity. It pushes up. Gravity wants to bring it down. Well, the roots go down and then actually hydraulically bring up all the nourishments to defeat gravity. So, I mean, look at that tiny seed. Do you think it would do that? No, you wouldn't think it could defy gravity, but it does. So those counterintuitive actions are what propelled those Great Depression gurus to achieve more than anybody else did during that worst time in our economy of our nation. Wow. Wow. Wow, it's wow. Awesome. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So, I get it. You know, we perceive the positive, we conceive it, we believe it so I can achieve increasing sales and greater productivity. I get to get out of the office earlier, take my kids yep. to the skating rink or go sledding <laughs> or, you know, whatever this ice age has no, created yeah. for us. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you, maybe my math is off, but you said there are five core practices. Once I achieve it, what else is there? Uh, and this was the sleeper core practice, if you will, the one that I didn't anticipate because I thought, well, once you achieve outstanding results, once your bottom line's up and, and happiness is everywhere, you know, you'd think it'd be all 
we're, we're done. No, man, I discovered this, this last core practice is, the, if you want to think of it as a sustainability core practice, this is the one that turns the five core practices back again. It's like a flywheel. You know, it keeps that perpetual motion going. The fifth core practice is what I call the receive core practice. And this is where you discover how to say thank you and you, and you really do that from an ethical uh, mandate is, is the way these guys in the Great Depression thought about it. I mean, they were such givers. They were so philanthropic. They invested their money back in their community. So, again, let's say I'm an insurance agent in my local community. I'm finding ways to say thank you to my customers and clients. Maybe on the first anniversary of somebody writing auto insurance with me, I send them a thank you card with a free car wash or a free oil change certificate inside of it, right? Just to say thank you. And I find other ways of serving my community. I sponsor a little league baseball team. I, I don't know, give away movie tickets to an important movie uh, or something. You know, it, it just find ways to serve and to squeeze yourself dry, as I like to talk about in the in the book and in the coaching program, so that you realize, hey, these people in my community, whether your community is international like yours and mine, or whether it's uh, just a local town of five thousand people. These are the people who keep the lights on. These are the people who buy my food. These are the people who pay my mortgage. Jason, I am utterly convinced that it's a universal principle of life that you do reap what you sow and that what goes around comes around. So I feel like I've got a teaspoon trying to give back, and and yet as I work positive, there are dump truck loads of blessings that are coming to me. So my mission in life is just to invest myself in other people as much as possible and to create as much happiness and positivity in the world as possible. Zig Ziglar said it best, if you help other people get what they want, you get everything you want. Uh, it's an amazing it's an amazing thing, this receive core practice. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, it is now time for our resource of the week. And now, here's your real deal resource of the week. So, tell me this, Dr. Joe. Should How, I do a drum roll or something right here? The, oh, sure, you know. Resource <laughs> of the week. <laughs> how, tell me this. How can our listeners find out more about you, about your books, about you know how you are able to go out and help entrepreneurs to succeed? Oh, man, and I'd live to do that. Uh, well, first of all, they can go to our website. You mentioned our company that we started earlier, Listen to Life. That's Listen, which I think is the foundation <laughs> of all of the best of life. We listen, right? Listen to T-O, life, L-I-F-E dot org. Listen to life dot org. And right there, there's a free webinar video for you to watch that will give you more information about these five core practices, how it's working for business people around the world. And uh, you'll, you'll find, of course, ways that you and I can be in a personal relationship to help you work positive in your negative world. Our seven weeks to work positive management coaching program is right there. That's an online video-based program where you get unlimited email support from me because I'm committed to your success. And the Work Positive Master Coaching Program is a really interesting resource we've come up with, and that's a leadership development tool for business owners because most of us, as you and I both love Michael Gerber, uh, most of us are uh, <laughs> technicians who had an entrepreneurial seizure, right? Absolutely. Uh, so, so just helping them develop uh, leadership skills. So you get a five-minute video each week to show to your team. You get a handout. I coach you through our podcast there, a leader conversation, and really help you begin to take on the work positive culture and DNA into your business. Uh, Amazon has all the books, whether you want an audible version of it that I did, that I narrated, or whether you want a Kindle version or our Entrepreneur Press paperback book. It's all right there on Amazon. So thanks for asking for that. Spectacular. Folks, get up, get out there. You know, it's, I'm, I'm a huge fan of getting – brilliance downloaded directly into my brain and uh oh, you know what somebody i thought, else made all the mistakes <laughs> no exactly exactly and all, all i have to do is buy a book or buy a coaching program or buy something and and they just inject that into me i i'll take that all day long so you know <laughs> well you know what it's 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 a really really important you know i, I try to read at least two books a week and you know for me that's been the the challenge um, how do I do it faster? How can I get more? And, and what can I implement from each of those? So, um, mm. folks, get out there. Uh, listen to life.org. 
important stuff. All right, Dr. Joy, I have one more question for you. I always okay. love to end my podcast with uh, with this because I think it's it's really telling. Um, if you could give business owners just one solid piece of advice to either help their business or more importantly to help them to live a better life, what would that piece of advice be? Oh, that's an easy one for me. Uh, it, it's twofold. One is focus. Focus, focus, focus. I think strategy, being strategic is at the heart of all that we do in life and business. And, and the second part of that is focus on the positive. Look, there's always going to be somebody sucking out the air out of the room by complaining about something. Nobody's life or business ever got better that way. Focus on the positive. Some days you might have to scratch to find it a little bit more. You may put your head on the pillow at night and say, what was there positive about today? At least you didn't get run over by a concrete truck, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if that's all you got some days, celebrate that. But just focus on the positive and watch the life in your business improve. I love it. Dr. Joy, thank you so, so very much for joining me today. I know how busy your schedule is, and I really appreciate the time you took to, uh, to share some of your wisdom with us. I am so humbled to be on your show, Jason, and I wish you only the best in your family as well. Thank you. Right back at you. All right, folks, that's all the time we've got for today. Thank you so much for tuning into The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more information about private coaching or to see if you'd benefit from one of my mastermind groups, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal. Make a plan. Work like hell towards it and achieve that success that you truly deserve. Now is the time. Get out there and make it happen. Go get them. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit JasonMSilverman.com.